In this lecture, we're going to take a look at bone matrix and see what it's made up of. And bone is made up of primarily organic and inorganic compounds. And of course, organic is no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. No, I'm sorry. That's not uh, what we mean by organic here. If you've ever taken organic chemistry or know anything about organic chemistry, it's the chemistry of carbon. And so some carbon-based compounds that we're going to find in the bone are collagen and proteoglycans. Now, collagen is found in most connective tissue, and bone is considered a connective tissue. It's going to give the tissue some strength. It's also going to give it some flexibility. And uh, the inorganic components, well, inorganic chemistry is the chemistry of everything else other than carbon, so we're going to look at mainly minerals in this case. And, um, you know, if I asked what mineral is bone made up mostly of, uh, you'd probably answer calcium. And you would be correct. It is made up mostly of calcium, but it's more than just that. We have calcium, phosphate, and uh, hydroxide here all put together into a compound we call hydroxyapatite. And again, um, the hydroxyapatite is going to be the inorganic portion or the mineral portion. Now we need both of these in a fairly uh, balanced form. If I took a bone, and you could even try this yourself, take a chicken bone, put it into a jar of vinegar, let it sit there for some time, um, I don't know, a couple of weeks, a few weeks, and when you you might have to change it every once in a while to, you know, pour out the old vinegar, pour some new in. But after a time, that bone is going to soften up and you can bend it and flex it. In this case, we see that the bone is tied in a knot. I've tried that a bunch of times. I always wind up splitting the bone, but uh, it does come out very rubbery. And that's because the vinegar, the acetic acid, is going to strip away or demineralize that bone. So we're taking out all the inorganic compounds and we're leaving the organic. And so that's going to make it very rubbery. On the other hand, uh, if we take a bone and we bake it and we bake out all that organic uh, component, it's then going to be very rigid and uh, very brittle. And if we smack it on a table, it'll just shatter. And again, this is very important because our bones need to have a little bit of flexibility to it. There's not a lot, but it does need the flexibility um, of the organic components and it needs the rigidity of the inorganic components. Think about uh, tall buildings. I'm in the Chicago area and uh, some of the very tall buildings here in Chicago when, um, depending on what floor you're standing on, sometimes you can feel that uh, building sway back and forth. Okay, and it was designed to do that. Uh, we have the flexibility so that that uh, building doesn't um, come upon too much force to withstand and, and uh, break, um, so it will sway. Uh, think about trees, um, like for instance in Florida. Think of a palm tree. Palm tree is very rigid, uh, very upright, but it has a lot of flexibility to it. When there's a storm, you can see sometimes these palm trees bent all the way over, touching the ground, and when the wind lets up, it comes back upright. If we took, um, oh, say an oak tree like we have here in Illinois, um, as a matter of fact, that's the Illinois state tree. If we took that down to Florida and we had one of those big storms, um, I can pretty much guarantee that that tree is not going to survive. It'll probably snap and break. So again, with our bone, we have to balance the organic and the inorganic uh, components. Now, again, collagen, very important. We need vitamin C in order to produce uh, collagen. And um, if we don't have enough uh, vitamin C, then we can develop something called scurvy. And uh, scurvy is basically the collagen component is, uh, well, you just don't get enough collagen. 
so the bones are going to be more brittle. Um, and if we look at even the rest of the body, because I said that uh, uh, collagen is very important in connective tissue, um, cuts are not going to heal very well. The skin is going to tear easily. Uh, you'll probably bruise very easily. Uh, teeth, or which are, are part of the skeletal system, uh, will break and shatter very easily. And so collagen, very important. On the other hand, with um, our inorganic uh, components here, if we don't get enough vitamin D, for instance, we won't get enough calcium. So we're not going to have as much mineral in the bone, but the bone is still going to be quite rubbery, like we see in the picture at the top there. And we can develop a condition called rickets. And as you can see in this uh, picture here, it's a, it's a child because uh, you can see where the growth plates are. Remember I said uh, x-rays will go right through the growth plates. Um, so you might want to take a look at that just to get a better idea of what the growth plates look like. But anyway, this is a child, um, still growing, uh, but you can see how the legs are very bowed and the, the bones are, are bent. And that's because the bones are, are soft in this case. Okay, And just the body weight of the child is bending those bones. Now going back to the hydroxyapatite, to me that just, it, it sounds like a weight loss pill that you would take. Uh, you'd, you'd find at a pharmacy or a, a GNC or something like that. So just to help you remember it, I did come up with a little commercial. Tell me what you think. That was me just a few weeks ago, but that was before I discovered hydroxyapatite. And look at me now. Hydroxyapatite is made from all natural ingredients, including calcium and phosphorus. Get yours today. Hydroxyapatite. Well, I hope that goofy commercial uh, kind of helps you remember uh, the name of the inorganic compound, hydroxyapatite.